Hey Sun Space Sun, I'm Daisy Victoria. Today we are going to make a super cute dress. I've been really into spooky season or spoopy season because I think that's spooky plus cute. And I just love the fabrics I've been finding this year. Especially, I really love this fabric that looks like it's made of tarot cards, but like super colorful ones. It's like a rainbow. It's so good. This project has a bit of an unexpected inspiration. Recently, I auctioned off 10 of my old dresses and a couple of them were this sort of like halter top with like a flowing full skirt that was short in the front and longer in the back. And I really like the style. And I actually thought that's something that a lot of people could make fairly easily if I digitized the pattern. And I thought, well, if I do that, I need to make a new one, you know, to work everything out. I also kind of wanted another one for myself personally. So when I saw this tarot fabric, I knew it would be perfect. Now this dress is not that complicated to make. Like it's a fairly quick project. So I figured I could make it pretty quickly and I was targeting like make it in about a day. Now that didn't quite go as planned because I'll tell you why. You know those times when it's 2 a.m. and you can't sleep and you just think what's the best thing for me to do right now when I can't sleep? Well the answer is obviously to go cut out a project, duh. So one day I couldn't sleep at 2 a.m. and I went and started cutting out my dress <laughs> and that's how I got started. Now I already had the pattern for this dress because I'd already made it and drafted it years ago. So basically I just had to get out the pattern and make sure it was properly formatted and everything so that I would be able to digitize it. Okay, so with those pieces initially cut out, that makes it a little easier to get started in the daytime. I did cut the underskirt later. I actually used an old sheet for the underskirt. I happened upon it at a thrift store and it was in good condition and it saved me a bunch of money. Because the sheet was so wide, I didn't have to put as many seams in the underskirt as I did the overskirt. The pattern is formatted so that you can use it on 44 inch wide fabric, which is what this stuff was. So one change that I did on this dress versus the dresses that I made before is that I added pockets. And that means there are pockets in the pattern and the written tutorial as well. These pockets are in the side seams and they're actually inserted in the lining or the underskirt piece. If you wanted to make this dress with just one skirt layer, obviously just put the pockets in that one layer. But since I had two, I put them on the inner layer and then hemmed that outer layer around them. The halter top is patterned in such a manner that it's pretty easy to construct actually. It's basically a rectangle that's gathered into that waistband. And I did line the halter on this. In my original pattern, I just have this as a straight rectangle. And what I wanted to do here was to make the fit around the bust slightly improved. So I actually ended up tapering the lower edge of that rectangle. And that is reflected in the pattern. Because if you're gonna get out a pattern that you've drafted years ago, you might as well make improvements and take it from the level it used to be at to the level you're at today. And I'm so thankful that I have grown over the years. <laughs> The waistband is another rectangle of fabric basically and it essentially connects the halter top to the skirt. 
The skirt is really full. It's actually a full circle and it's short in the front and very long in the back. Now, what I love about this skirt is that it's so dramatic. <laughs> like it's really long. It actually has a train. It looks great in photo shoots. It looks great like flowing behind you as you walk like a magical being. The one problem with the skirt being super long though is that it does drag on the ground and I want to be able to wear this dress out to places where I'm not trying to be dramatically picking up all the leaves and sticks on the ground behind me. So I took a page out of fashion history and added a bustle to the back of this skirt. What I did here is the same method that I used to bustle my 18th century gown that I recently made and that is I put a loop and a ribbon structure. So there's a loop on the skirt and then a ribbon at the waistband and they basically tie together. So that way I can tie up the skirt when I want it to not drag on the ground and I can untie it for that super cool dramatic effect. I used buttons in the back of my waistband for this dress. Now obviously you could use a different closure if you want to. You could use hooks and eyes, you could put a zipper in there. I thought the buttons looked really cute with this design and with that loud fancy fabric. Hemming the skirt because it's so very big is one of the time consuming parts of the dress. I did kind of a standard fold over twice hem on both layers of the skirt and to do that I ironed it down first so whenever you have fabric that's cut on some places the straight grain and other places the bias it likes to be a little finicky when you sew it so ironing it first is a good way to help you out there and we might as well make this as easy as possible. It's interesting because had I not gotten rid of those old dresses, I probably never would have made this one because it was actually getting rid of those old dresses that made me remember how much I liked this style. And then I was actually able to improve upon it. So not only did I bring the style back for a new dress, but I made the pattern slightly better. And I think that's pretty cool that we are already seeing forward moving results from that purge. So just goes to show, you got to get rid of stuff to make room for where you're going. Oh my gosh, you guys, you know what the colors in this fabric totally remind me of? I think I should make a Lisa Frank dress next. Let me know in the comments if you think my next project should be a Lisa Frank dress. I love the way this dress came out. I think it's so cute. The fabric I chose is so perfect for this season because it's got that beautiful kind of spooky Halloween fall vibe. And the design of the dress is actually suitable to be worn in the fall where I live, where it's still hot. And if you live someplace where it actually gets cold in the fall, hey, look, a summer dress. This project was pretty quick. It wasn't super duper involved for me, but I really wanted to do it because one, I wanted to make this dress for myself. And two, I thought it would be really cool if I could give you guys the pattern and some instructions and maybe just some inspiration to make something that you really like. I really love making complicated costumes and gowns and fantastical designs. 
but I think there's something to be said for making something simple once in a while. It does give you that nice little rush of dopamine because you get a project done very quickly. And also, I feel like I'm here to inspire you guys. And while some of the bigger projects are very aspirational, like even for me, they're challenging. Projects like this, I feel like are great things for people of many different levels to try. And I hope that more of you guys can actually try projects like this. Let your imagination shine and if you guys accessorize your dress in a super cool way I'd like to see what you did with it and how you showed your imagination and if you did get any inspiration please feel free to tag me I would love to see what you made I'm Daisy Victoria on all the social medias my website is daisyvictoria.com and a special thank you to my patrons over on patreon who help me so much to continue creating amazing content like this I hope you have a super magical spoopy day and I will see you again real soon.